Hello and welcome to Uli Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Libra. If Libra is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. <laughs> It's going to be a little bit loud around here. I'm not going to lie to you. It is the middle of the day. I am um, trying to get my readings done so I don't have to do them late at night. <laughs> um, all right. So let's go. And as you can hear, the cat is already scratching. The moment they hear me start talking, they know it's time. It's time to get rowdy. All right, so our card for the reading. If you're new to the channel, then you'll, then you won't know. <laughs> if you've already been here, you know. Um, I choose one card. Um, at the beginning of my reading, I do it before I start, but, um, just cause it would be tedious, uh, and boring for you to watch. But, <laughs> um, I pick a card out of the deck and, um, that helps set the tone for maybe what this reading will be about. Okay. I want to look at this over this way. Um, and so the card today is the nine of cups happiness. That's, uh, you know, I'm not sad that that's, <laughs> I'm not sad that that's the card that we chose, that we picked, that the universe provided. Um, it, it seems like it's about time. Uh, you know, things haven't been going too bad for Libra, but I think they can get better always. Right. And so I, uh, I'm happy to see happiness. All right. So I want to look at this one. And it's really interesting. I want to look at it from this side first. Okay. And so what I'm seeing is a person standing here. It looks like they're kind of, um, let me see if I can just get this a little bit closer. My light got moved and just, I know it's, very unprofessional. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, and so, okay, we have this image here and it looks like uh, a person kind of on their knees a little bit. It looks like they are planting a flower and the flower is already blooming. Now on this side, we have a, maybe a child, um, somebody who is smaller. And so I feel like this is very much about kind of family cooperation, um, kind of, you know, passing on knowledge to the younger generation, this feeling of kind of, um, discovery of how things work. Uh, you know, the, the things that we, as adults take for granted, right? Um, you know, of course, not everybody knows how to grow things exactly, but we mostly have a pretty basic understanding of, you know, you take the seed or the plant, you dig a hole, you put some soil in there, pack it down, and, you know, you give it some water, maybe some plant food or whatever, manure, <laughs> compost. Um, but a child, they have no idea. It's, you know, everything is new. Um, they're, and, and constantly uh, being re-exposed to things and then it feels kind of new to them again. And, you know, um, and then when they start to get little pieces, uh, they build upon it and it's so exciting and they are so excited. And so I feel like this is, it almost feels like, like quite literally you have been maybe raising your child, teaching them. Uh, maybe you are in teaching. Maybe you're a, a teacher of some kind. Um, maybe you have been watching your grandkids, raising your grandkids, teaching them. And um, whatever it is, whoever it is, 
uh, it seems like you are really so such a special person in their life. Um, you are kind of that hierophant, right? You are kind of the revealer, the high priestess, okay? You are bringing them into a world of understanding, giving them the tools to kind of put things together, to figure things out. Um, that is so magical. I mean, it seems silly, right? We, and again, I'll say we take things for granted. Um, you know, I have a toddler, so I'm constantly talking about things. Um, you know, trying to explain, you know, all the why, why, why's constantly every day trying to, um, bring my daughter into new situations so she can, you know, just, um, enjoy the mysteries of life. Uh, today we were out sitting underneath a honeysuckle, uh, bush, tree, bush, I guess it would be a bush, but it's so tall. <laughs> it looks like a tree now. Um, and there's a, a big patch of motherwort growing. And we were looking at those little flowers and you know what? I was in awe myself because I did not realize they look like little tiny orchids. They're so beautiful. Um, and I'll post, I'll post them on the, the pictures I took. And we sat there and the birds came above us in the bush and they were yelling at us, telling us to get out of there because they probably had a nest in there somewhere. <laughs> and my daughter was just so immersed in that. I mean, it was, I can only imagine, you know, I remember what it was like to be in nature as a, as a young person. Um, how big everything felt, how, um, you know, enchanted everything felt. I love seeing that. I try, I feel like I get a little piece of it. And so I, I look at this and I see this blooming and I feel like you're in that place. And that is happiness, right? It's not necessarily, it's not like a, you're dissociating from, you know, mundane reality. It is like, being hyper into the subtle crevices of, of base reality, of our shared reality, of our shared hallucination we have here. Finding the beauty and the things that we forget are so beautiful. I can't tell you how many days I go out there and I'm watering and yeah, it's nice. It's nice to have a moment of a little bit of quiet. I'm in the sun maybe. Or, you know, the, the sun's going down and it's just quiet and peaceful and I'm watering the plants and, you know. But there are days I don't even think about how lucky I am. You know, and I am. And we are. We're lucky. We're lucky to be alive. We're lucky to, you know, wake up in the morning or afternoon or evening, whenever you wake up, of course, <laughs> um, any time is good. Uh, but there's so much potential every single day. So many choices to be made. A lot of them. Yeah. They're, they're tedious. They could be overwhelming anxieties, but you know, we're still very lucky. There's that blessings and troubles. We have trouble, so we are alive. You know? Now, you know, don't get me wrong. I know sometimes it's too much. Sometimes you feel like you're drowning for sure. Um, no matter what anybody says, you know, especially if you're in grief deep pain, chronic physical pain, emotional pain, mental health issues. Um, you know, people can tell you, be happy for what you have. You're lucky, you're alive. And, you know, you kind of just 
it makes it kind of twists the knife a little bit honestly i and i know what that feels like i've been there many times and i'll be there again i'm sure you know but I think in this time, and now we turn this around, it looks like this flower has gotten even bigger. And now they're kind of standing, standing, and, and it looks like it's grown, flourishing. I feel like this, this thing that you're doing, this time that you're spending with this younger person, this child, but maybe, you know, maybe, and I know we hate to hear about the, 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 um, you know, our, our own internal child, right? But, you know, maybe that's what it is too. Maybe you are finally looking inward, raising, coveting, loving, listening to that internal child that internal and eternal child <laughs> you know and and when we really do embrace that part of ourself that has um often been left behind abandoned hurt holding on to things that happened when we were, um, you know, so vulnerable, but also we, you know, like a sponge, you took in every little thing that went on around you. That's what you learned. You know, your foundation came from this time in your life, right? And so no matter what happens, we kind of continue to keep these hurts with us. Even when we have resolved the actual situation we maybe have processed gone through therapy you know made amends with the people who have harmed us who have wronged us with our parents our parents you know even if we had the best parents in the world they are human and they have made mistakes and we remember those things they they made us who we are in some ways and, um, you know, even if you have intentionally made amends, forgiven, processed those things with that person, with that parent or whoever, the caretaker, we still carry those pathways, those neural pathways, that, that conditioning, uh, those coping mechanisms that we create. To survive life, you know, these are things I was listening to somebody talk about how when you meet somebody who is an empath, and this is not every empath, but a lot of empaths, uh, it's almost kind of a sad occurrence because so many people who are empathic are people who have survived abuse. Or they have come from a home life that is very unstable. It's emotionally um, a roller coaster. They've been around people who yell, scream, cuss them, you know, verbally abuse them, emotionally abuse them, maybe physically abuse them. Um, they've, you know, they have to be in such a state of uh, awareness. So that they may take the temperature of the household, of the people within the household, um, so they know how to behave, so they don't set somebody off. They know when to go and hide in their room, to leave the house, to go stay at a friend's house, whatever it is. And that almost made me cry. Really, it did. Um, and I thought about it because I grew up in a household of mental illness and addiction. My parents died when I was young um, because of these things. And it was a very volatile uh, environment. And I feel like, and I talk, <laughs> talk to my husband about this a lot, um, I feel like I'm very 
hypersensitive to people and what they how they say things um their behaviors you know if they give a little more attention than i think they should um if they feel weird like they're behaving strangely uh not listen i love a weird i'm a weird person <laughs> but you know an unsafe energy right and I think, you know, and I, and I feel like, I guess you could consider me on some levels an empath type of person, but it's because for me anyways, it's because I grew up in that kind of environment, right? I feel like, you know, you, and this is true of a lot of Libras, you all are people who, um, feel deeply. You don't necessarily express it as on the, you know, on, you don't wear your heart on your sleeve, I guess you would say. And I'm looking at this bird. <laughs> Get into it. It's a hawk. Okay. Um, I think that, uh, you know, this, this, and it's wing, the wings, you know, are not there, right? I think that sometimes because these birds, the hawks, the eagles, they, they express usually a, a deep imagination, um, a very intelligent being, somebody who can soar above the rest, um, probably did well in school or on the flip side, didn't do well in school, but was so inventive, building your own worlds. But I think that sometimes uh, you can be very, um, your emotions go into a t kind of tailspin. If somebody comes into your uh, direct life and they have off vibes, energies, frequencies, you're very sensitive to those things, but you don't really necessarily, um, convey that you like to think about things, sort them out, try to reason things out. Um, I think you're the type of person you are very intuitive. And I think that you trust yourself. You're confident in how you feel, but sometimes you choose against yourself because you don't want to offend people. You don't want to make somebody feel uncomfortable, but you know, like they, you just meet them and you're like, mm, not for me, not today. <laughs> but if they try to like ingratiate themselves into your life, you don't necessarily just say straight up, listen, uh, you know, this isn't going to work for me or I don't really know. No, none for me. Thanks. You know, you, you'll put up with it to some degree. Maybe you'll ghost them later on, but I don't think that you necessarily are very confrontational. And sometimes because you get trapped in this feeling of discomfort, it's like your higher thinking your imagination, your creative world, it gets stunted because you're stuck in this like cycle of anxieties. I don't think that's going on so much right now. I think that you maybe have had a situation maybe recently where it did kind of feel that way. That's why this is showing up. But I feel like we turn this, it looks like the bird has its wings. The bird is doing its, ah, <laughs> you know, ready to take off. Rising once again. I think this has everything to do with tending to that youthful uh, consciousness. If that is a physical child in your life, or if that is your kind of, you know, internal child eternal child you are rising you are rising and i think that something that is so important to keep in mind 
is that who you want to be is who you really are. You know, it's not, it's not this idea of like always trying to get to this like perfect configuration. We're human. We're messy. We're messy creatures. We're all over the place. We're many things. That, that person you have in your mind, you are that person, that thing, that person that thing that you want to aspire to, it exists because you believe it. Because you have conceived it. Of course, there's always work to be done, right? But we can also get stuck in the muddle of always trying to achieve something um, that it really is a matter of perception versus uh, actually getting to this place. Okay. And this one I see again. I just have this motif of uh, parent and child really going hard today. Grandparent, child. Something like this. We have a person holding a child, okay? And that's in kind of a spiritual zone on the edge here. So I think this cannot, this is, it's, I mean, it could be parallel to both. It's both things, you know, an actual child and um, in your life and your own self-development. I, for one, had when I had a child, I had to look at so many things that I never would have looked at as a um, person who did not have children at all in my life. I have no friends that have kids, really, that I have been around. Um, very few of my friends have had children. So, um, you know, I didn't, I've never, in my adult life, I've rarely been around kids. So, now that I have one, I've had to think about all these things from my, my own childhood. Things I had to really confront. Um, taking care of that really broken, 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 abused part of myself. That kind of set up many years of, you know, suffering in my life. And I think that happens to us all. It just looks different. You know, for each person, we do a lot of growing when we are around children. We also do a lot of letting go of what doesn't matter. All of these things, this like busy stuff that we kind of think is so important until we have a child and or we are around children. And then you just sit in the dirt. The sun is nice. The temperature's not too hot. Hey, we got a hose with some water. You know, let's like build some mud holes or whatever. And that's all that matters in that moment. That's the world. That's the whole world. And that's what they teach us. That's what kids remind us of that we forget. And those are holy moments. If you ask me. Okay. We also have a little plane. I feel like maybe. Hey, are you going on a trip? Seems like one might be coming up. I wanted to look at this as well. We have. It looks like. Um, in my mind, I thought. Okay, that looks like a phone pole. A power. Like a, a phone pole. Yeah. Like a. Um where the phone lines used to hang from. Do they still have the? I mean, we have them out here. I think that they're electrical now. I don't know. I don't think the phones go off of that anymore. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm exposing how much I don't know. Um, so, uh, anyways, I just think off the top of my head, seeing that communication 
it seems like there will be some kind of communication with somebody. Okay. Um, I really think that, uh, it seems like somebody long distance, maybe this is why you're going to be traveling. Whoever it is, uh, reach out to them. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and we have another plane right here. I really think you must be at least, you don't have to be getting on a plane, but I think that you are doing some kind of traveling. Um, And then I wanted to look at this little house, okay? I feel like there is somebody And what is this? I almost see like going maybe to like a like a cabin or some kind of um like a, a rented place to meet family maybe or friends this could be some kind of trip like that i think that though uh it feels it feels like it's going to be kind of a bittersweet thing i think you're really looking forward to it but it almost feels like it's the ending to something like the ending to an era I think that there's a lot of happiness and release in it, but it's also difficult. Almost like somebody has passed away that can't be there. Or um, maybe something like that. Like somebody who usually comes to these things, these gatherings, um, they are unable to make it. Uh, either because they have transcended already or, you know, they might be ill, ill, you know, and it feels kind of like that, like the end of an era things are changing. Okay. Now let's. Okay. So we have a heart. We have a little butterfly. So we have growth, we have love. And I feel like this, so much of this love is about family stuff, being close. It doesn't have to be your origin family. It could be your family of choice. Okay. Um, but I feel like there is a, a harmony, a coming together. And I think that's something that would be uh, really useful to you, possibly, if you're interested in some homework here, um, is maybe taking like a little box and creating uh, kind of a keepsake of like sacred things that kind of mark this moment in your life, this growth, this feeling of happiness, contentment, but also, uh, you know, leaving behind whatever it was but taking parts of it with you, the things that are sacred, that are beloved. Okay. And I know that's, that can be difficult, but I think that doing things like, you know, it's almost like a t time capsule or a keepsake box, but, um, this is something that is sacred to your heart. And I think every once in a while we go through these periods where um, things really evolve in, in such a way. They are so loving and fruitful and um, there are parts that are markedly sad and difficult, but there's always a balance in life, right? And so we find a way to honor these times. And I think that's where we're at with that. Okay, Libra, I want to thank you so much. <laughs> I just have to say, I did this reading yesterday. It was a wholly different reading because um, it was a different card and it was a di different tea, tea leaves. I recorded the Libra reading and the sound was not on it. So I am redoing the Libra reading today. And, um, I think it's much better. So it was like meant to be, um, 
and it makes me happy. <laughs> it really makes me happy. So anyways, I want to thank you so much. If you'd be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm. And I say us because we are becoming quite a community here at the channel. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Hopefully by the end of this weekend, um, today is Friday. Uh, th this is coming out on Saturday morning. Um, hopefully by the end of this weekend, we'll be up to 10 K subs subscribers. I don't sub seems weird. <laughs> sounds silly, but anyways, I'm excited. I'm so excited. And I appreciate all of you so much. If you haven't subscribed, please think about doing so help bump us up to 10. Um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> if you want to leave a comment, please do that too. I love, uh, hearing from you all. I love reading each and every one of them. I try to get back to them as quick as I can. Sometimes it takes me some time. Um, we have a million things going on over here and, um, and anyways, I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will talk again real soon.